Hey there, this is Dr. Doug Willen, the Animal Cracker, and I wanted to thank everybody for their support this year. In this video coming up, you're gonna see a lot of fan favorites. If you're new to the channel, thank you for joining in with us. You'll find this community is very supportive, and we try to really be mindful of being polite and, and uh, caring and loving of the animals and the owners that do participate with allowing us to film videos of their, of their family members, right? So thanks again, and I really love that people get involved with this channel. It means so much to me. Thank you. Stanley, the one sheep, has a very tilted neck. And we initially suspected that could have been an injury from the accident, but we're not entirely sure. Mm -hmm. Stanley, the little lamb, was a very moving session for me. Uh, it turns out he lives in North Carolina. He's about an hour from where my, my, dad, my mom and dad have a home in Asheville, North Carolina, but they're in Waynesville and I decided to go visit them and combine it with a family visit with my parents. Little Stanley, he was tied to another sheep and they were in a pickup truck that flipped over and they were left to die in the woods. And here, look at the x-ray. The x-ray, you could see how bent his neck was. And uh, the vet said that, you know, it could have happened from birth. He could have been born with something called rye neck where your neck is distorted from the birth canal. Uh, they didn't really know. Um, and the one thing they did know is it probably wouldn't get better. But I thought, let's try. You know. So it's not just bent in one direction, it's also twisted. Another one, you hear it? Yep. T1 again. Okay. I think that's it for today, people. Well, let's see how he does. He's, he's got a good life. The main thing is he's with people that love him and take great care of him and he has a great team. And Alexa and Sharon are like amazing. And the update is great because we get to see how much change. I'm here with our rescued sheep, Stanley. And it has been just about two weeks since Dr. Doug came to give Stanley the sheep a chiropractic adjustment. And the improvement that we have seen in Stanley since that time is unbelievable. Now Stanley essentially looks like a normal sheep. His neck is much more straight. We're so grateful to Dr. Doug for coming all the way to North Carolina to see Stanley and to give him an adjustment because now Stanley is able to live his life like a normal sheep and his range of movement is just, it's increased so much. It's really, really incredible. You know, it's funny, I get these uh, comments sometimes on the Animal Cracker channel specifically, like how much are you charging these people? And I went all the way to North Carolina, I didn't charge them. Um, I do get to film. I love that. You know, I'm trying to share my, my work with people. Nope, I pay my own expenses and uh, I get paid by helping animals. That's what it means to me. So here's Stetson. What a lovely dog. What's really cool about the owner is the owner really knows animals. She's from a horse background. She can look at the gait of a quadruped, whether it's a horse or a dog, and tell if something's off. And she knows that the tail and horses, the tail is very important too because if the tail is too high or it's low and sad or if it doesn't come to the middle on its swishing, it all means something. It's telling us something is off. And uh, Stetson had this tail that would swing to one side and come back to the middle and swing to one side and come back to the middle. Now we can adjust this, but I want to start with stretching. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to leave that for a minute. Yeah. I'm around. Oh, <laughs> you know, you want to, you just want to help. Your mom has to keep massaging that area for me, okay? So make sure she does that on a daily basis for even a couple of minutes. It would be fantastic. Okay? Oh. Now, look how cute this dog is. This dog had a lot of, a lot of damage, uh, appropriate receptive loss. You knuckle down the, the toes and they're supposed to correct them, but if they don't, that means that the brain and the body are not connected. Because as soon as I had early onset of uh, IBDD, she had no response at all. Yeah. I had to push her in the stroller because she couldn't, she wasn't standing. So I'm going to laterally flex. Oh, you hear that little click a little bit, right? 
I like to work on the atlas because that can sometimes help the whole body. It's kind of the fuse box, the switchboard for the whole body. One more. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. It's okay. All right, that part's done. Let's see, let's see, there we go. So and it's fun to watch them shake out. You know, when they shake out, that's them integrating. That's kind of the parasympathetic nervous system integrating the work that we just did. Horses go and dogs shake it out. And now how about crook? Named after she was had this crooked tail. So it's C-R-O-O-K. Almost got it. Got it. Got it. Good girl, Crook. Mommy's proud. Okay. Crooked tail. And when you see a crooked tail like that, especially on an older dog, the job isn't to crack and fracture a tail just to get it straight. Now, if it's a young dog and it's still cartilaginous, we can bend it back or possibly set it. Or if it just happened like a week ago. But Crook is such a sweet dog. And, you know, the owner uh, was really lovely to, to see her connection with her dog. So here's Rain, and he's such a great guy. He's the type of guy, Rain, I'm talking about the dog, where when they r walk through the neighborhood, everybody has to stop to greet Rain, and Rain knows a lot of people. You could just feel that charisma that Rain has. And we worked with Rain over, I think, six videos, and did mostly on a monthly basis. And they would see a lot of change. So they would see, okay, Rain didn't need the wheelchair this month. And then towards the time of where Rain would be coming back in for another treatment, Rain would start getting weak again. So it didn't cure Rain, but it kept Rain fresher longer. And I tell people, you know, chiropractic for animals as well as humans is not a one-off procedure. It's a process and he was enjoying his walks, and that's, he loves his walks. Can I work with you today? What do you think of that? Can I do a little checkup on you? Look at this dog. I mean, this is a cute dog. So I'm gonna bring it to tension. Ooh, that made a little click. Did you hear that? All right, look, this is the life. You just get a full massage. You know, it's a day at the spa for Gigi. Gigi needs a manicure, a pedicure, a facial. You know, a little body contouring perhaps. Maybe a little electrolysis or hair removal would be good for the bikini line. A little Brazilian wax, who knows? Uh, you know, it's a day at the spa. Gigi is just a cutie. Come on, Sheba. Good. Now, Sheba is a great cat. So what happened to her health? So I saw you sent me the lab work, how I'm involved, and so we're gonna look at just the spinal alignment. Yeah. yeah. Sheba, oh, I just, I just oh got my hit. goodness, Sheba. Just, Why are you so mad yeah. all of a sudden? Tough to bond with cats sometimes. They're, they're, first of all, they come to my office so they're not in their own element. Think about it, dogs are always leaving the house or the apartment in more social situation, or at least challenging social situations. Cats aren't, cats have their home, they rarely leave their home. So now we're bringing Sheba to my office through a subway, through taxis, through Ubers, through buses to get to me, meets me for the first time, and the first thing I do is touch the sore spot. So not only am I new, but I'm putting my finger in the worst spots. I'm on the right hip. That's where she's got the pain yeah. in the right leg. She, she, yeah. I got her though. She can't go. She can't move. All right, so I'm gonna finish on this. Yeah. She got it. And you can see she was a little uncomfortable. So we start working really light. Now, fortunately, with cats, you can work light. You don't have to go in and pound them. They have very flexible spines, and the littlest bit can work really well with a cat. Oh. So Mello is, you know, a, a senior bunny, really advanced in its, what do you say, aging. Tell me about it, you know? None of us are as young as we used to be, right? Well, maybe you are, but not me. But mello has got some, you know, some issues, some rear end lameness. So we, we do the best we can with animals. Sometimes we can turn them around. Sometimes we're giving them comfort. Sometimes we're trying to reduce pain. Um, make them comfortable through the aging process. Okay, now 
guys licking me, and nobody low kisses for me. So here's um, King Carl. Oh, I got that one. That's the one I want. So what happens with a pig like this is they're usually slaughtered way before they have time to get this big. And King Carl is upwards of 950 pounds. And he's also the patriarch of the whole pig farm. They all kind of respect him. It's kind of cool that like this is King Carl. And he's not mean. He just has this commanding presence. And you really have to lay into this to get the bones to move. But you have to pick the right spots. So it's very important to know your angles. I studied you know, the different skeletons of all these different animals. And in case you're wondering, it's exhausting working on a 950 pound pig. This is such a great story. So listen to this story. Just to recap, so Max was on a transfer truck headed to slaughter. So he jumps off the truck, scurries away, Someone saw Someone him, right? Saw him. And then somehow word got out to Todd to come get, but how, how about that? That's a, that's a pig that's not ready to die. And I think animals know sometimes when they're like, you're done with them and you're gonna send them to get killed. They know when they're going to the slaughterhouse. They sense it, at least Max did. So he's on this truck headed to slaughter and he jumps out the back and makes a break for it. Someone found Max and they call Todd, who owns this Arthur's Acres Animal Sanctuary, where pigs are sanctuaried. And um, Todd got to take Max home and began to rehab him. But now Max can live out his life at this beautiful sanctuary. And he, uh, he lived. Waverly, first of all, I saw Waverly like two years ago. And Christine, the owner of this rescue farm out in Long Island, New York, she calls me up and, and Waverly is a Tennessee walker, 21, 22 years old, a rescue horse. And she says, Waverly can't graze. And I don't know if you know how bad this is, but a horse that gets to be in the pasture all day will graze up to 16 hours a day. A horse is a prey animal. If a horse can't do certain things it's accustomed to doing, it goes under a high stress. Its blood pressure will rise, it stops functioning, it could shut down its digestion, it, it might stop urinating. It, and in Waverly's case, Waverly had such a problem with its pole, its top bone in its neck, it couldn't graze. Back and up, superior, he's kind of stuck superior and doesn't, can't really bring the head back down. Okay, Truth, let me hang out with you today. He's a good boy. There he is. There he <laughs> is. Good boy. I needed to release that pole. And you could start to see what happens. Now you can do it fast or you can do it slow. You can go in and just like snap the pole down. But I knew I needed to do a little bit more than that because of how locked up the muscles were. So I wanted to really jiggle it out. Okay, so here's Arapaho. What a beautiful pain. Look at, look at this horse. But the big thing we're going to do is set the shoulder. And you can hear it. You know, sometimes uh, you don't hear it on a horse. But that was a big loud pop. Ooh. That was loud. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I wasn't trying to do that. Did you hear it? Yes. This is, they didn't, ow. <laughs> And then did you see my hand got bit? So the other horse came over and bit my hand. The best pony on the planet. Take care of all the kids, right? Life of teaching children about how to take good care of horses. Okay, so Gandalf is blind. And what a beautiful, cute, cute little guy, right? But it takes time to uh, bond with a horse that's never met me. I feel a pulse now under my thumb. I'm gonna wiggle it a little bit. I mean, it's kind of scary to have that done. Here's a couple little niblets that fell down. You want a couple of these, babe? Okay, one more. So I pay attention to a lot of stuff. I pay attention to the, their body language, their ears, uh, their eyes. When you touch their back, you can also feel like the hair teaches us a lot. Like, is the hair 
You could feel misalignments right through the hair. So it moved right over like we wanted. A little stretch, a little stretch. It's funny, <laughs> with the dog needing my attention at the same time. Holding that muscle and look at over here, I have to do this. So this is what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with attention people. He might lurch a little bit if we do this. There it goes, I got it. Ready, sir? Big breath in. So I know people make fun of me because I say take a big breath in, even with animals. Um, part of me believes that the animal will listen and take a big breath in. Part of it is because I need to hear it myself. I need to take a big breath in. They can perceive if your blood pressure is up. They can perceive if your heart rate's off. They can perceive if you're sick. Like let's say you had full-blown stage four cancer. Animals can feel that sometimes. They have a sense of something's off with this person, something's sickly. Um, so I take it seriously and I, I feel like by me saying to a horse or a dog, take a breath in, it's just a way to connect. And they might be listening, they might not, but it's me asking to be in their space and also me humbly knowing I need to respect them and their boundaries and their space. So I always have fun working with Jennifer. So Jennifer has the Animal Rescue R Us. They mostly focus on medically challenged animals. So she doesn't just get regular rescues. She gets ones that are in diapers. She gets ones that are near death sometimes. She came into the rescue because her owner had passed away. Um, so it left her and her puppies homeless. I found homes for her two puppies and then fell in love with her. Who's your chiropractor? Because it's, <laughs> it's pretty balanced. She's in good shape. <laughs> pretty good shape. But the atlas needs a little bit on the right here. So I'm going to do that first. Right wing of the atlas. Woody is a chihuahua mix, and I love Woody. Sometimes Woody loves me, sometimes Woody wants to bite me. Do a little more. Sacred base, posterior. Whoa, whoa, I know, that's the tender one. No, I didn't get it. All right, I'm gonna do, I'm you gonna use the it, tapping instrument. I'm gonna come in really quick. There's, go, boom, got it. I've seen Woody a few times, and I think each and every time we have to decide what type of relationship we have. So brown dog, they didn't really have a name for brown dog. So when brown dog was in a shelter, it had some type of serial number as its name, you know, like 475-328. And then they gave brown dog a name, but didn't respond to that name. And so eventually they just started calling it brown dog. The next day when I pulled her, she had had her puppies in the shelter. What are you thinking about? I always wonder when a dog stares off in the distance like that. What are you looking? What do they think about? What are you thinking about? Oh, wow, Nugget is so happy to see me, I think. I mean, Nugget's story is just heart-wrenching. Nugget, from the time that I got her as a five-week-old puppy, we kind of always experienced this, like, intermittent vomiting after mm -hmm. eating or when she's, like, super excited. Nugget, at five weeks old, was um, stomped, almost stomped to death by a drug addict who um, broke Nugget's skull, broke the left jaw, blinded the eye, and uh, permanent brain damage and the dog was in the south and came all the way up to New Jersey through a kind of underground railway of people taking Nugget along part of the journey up, up driving Nugget all the way up till they finally made it to New Jersey to Jennifer's where she would take that type of dog in. Got it. Okay, that was it. That was a little misalignment on you. How he did that jumping. I love you. Everybody loves you. You're such a special dog. Thank you so much for a great year. I hope you enjoyed watching these videos as much as we did working with the animals and also putting these videos up for people to see what it's like for us behind the scenes, what we really do with these animals. And um, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for the comments and for the participation. I think of this as a real community and people on the community seem to get to know each other and the side conversations are fun for me to read as well. I hope you liked this video. I liked being a part of making it and I wanted to have a special shout out to Lisa 
our social media person and editor that's really orchestrated a big year for us. Now, going forward, we have a lot of plans to maybe bring up our production value this year and deliver a higher quality video and more interesting cases, I hope, too. Thank you so much, and Happy New Year. Thank you.